The next two questions concern hip resurfacing, which is an operation, frankly, which saw its heyday in the United States most recently about seven to ten years ago and has now declined in popularity, but there are a couple of questions about it. All of the following are absolute or relative contraindications to hip resurfacing, except which of the following? The answer to this is number five, that is age less than 50 years. And the reason for that is that the single group of patients that has had the best results with hip resurfacing has been young males, so males under 50. In all other groups, the rate of problems has been considerably greater than for conventional hip arthroplasty. And even in the group uh, age less than 50 that are male, there's not evidence of superiority of hip resurfacing. All the other distractors are incorrect because they are either absolute or relative contraindications to hip resurfacing, including large femoral head cysts, the presence of dysplasia, which makes it hard to put in a socket uh, that does not allow screws to be put through it, coxivera because of the risk of femoral neck fracture, and femoral neck bone stock deficiency for the same reason. A few comments about hip resurfacing. There have been a number of iterations of hip resurfacing over the years. Most of the earlier versions failed due to the large head diameter wearing against conventional polyethylene, creating high volumetric wear, lysis, and loosening. More modern implants have been made out of metal metal. And there was an increase in popularity of this form of treatment, as I mentioned, about 10 years ago or so, because of the potential to uh, cause less bone uh, resection or bone uh, invasion in the femur. Nowadays, the, probably the only patients that would be considered a potential candidate for this would be the young male, as I've already described, or perhaps occasionally the patient with a very severe proximal femoral deformity that's so severe that you doing the resurfacing arthroplasty makes sense because it allows you to not instrument the proximal femur. That would be a very rare patient nowadays. Contraindications we've just talked about, I won't belabor them. They include bone stock deficiency of the femoral head, coxivera for the reasons we've talked about, or patients with biomechanical problems which could be solved with a conventional hip arthroplasty but cannot be solved with a resurfacing arthroplasty. There are some advantages to hip arthroplasty, at least in a theoretical sense. For the patient who starts out with a very high offset limb, it may allow you to restore the biomechanics of the hip more normally than could the range of conventional femoral components that could fit into that femur. Revision might be easier than an intramedullary total hip arthroplasty, at least on the femoral side. The drawbacks are that it does not allow you to correct abnormal femoral anatomy very well, and it does require a larger exposure than conventional hip arthroplasty, which is an important caveat and not entirely intuitive. The outcomes of hip resurfacing have been somewhat variable in the literature, I think it's fair to say. As I've mentioned previously, the best results have been in young male patients with good bone stock. Most series have not demonstrated improved survivorship compared to conventional hip arthroplasty. In fact, most have demonstrated less good survivorship at 10 plus years. And a few implants have been removed from the market due to early failures of the metal bearing. Most prospective trials have not shown major functional differences between resurfacing arthroplasty and total hip arthroplasty. We'll move on to the final question in this section concerning hip arthroplasty. And that says, when discussing metal on metal resurfacing, versus metal on polyethylene total hip replacement, the surgeon should inform the patient all of the following are disadvantages of hip resurfacing, except. Correct answer to this is higher dislocation rate. So the one, one benefit potentially of hip resurfacing is it allows the surgeon to use a relatively large diameter femoral head, which keeps the dislocation rate relatively low. On the other hand, for the distractors, hip resurfacing is associated with a higher periprosthetic fracture rate due to the risk of femoral neck fracture. It's associated with increased serum metal ion levels because of the necessity of using a metal metal bearing with current designs. There are higher rates of osteonecrosis because of the fact the femoral head's retained. And then a, there isn't, as I've already mentioned, a larger incision surgical dissection required just because that's what it takes to get into resurfacing arthroplasty implant. A few quick comments concerning complications of hip resurfacing. Periprosthetic femoral neck fracture is one of the known complications. The incidence varies in different series, but can be up to as high as 4%. The mechanisms include notching of the femoral neck, osteonecrosis of the upper femur, and then subsequent fracture as the most common reasons. Conversion to total hip arthroplasty is the standard form of treatment for that complication. The other complications you should be aware of are the potential for loosening of either the acetabular or femoral component. Femoral component, remember, is cemented in most versions of resurfacing arthroplasty. Heterotopic ossification can occur, 
and there's probably a little higher incidence compared to total hip arthroplasty because of the wider exposure involved and also perhaps because of the demographics that are most commonly used in young men who are more likely to get heterotopic ossification. The biggest problems have been with respect to the metal metal bearing and the potential problems related to increased metal levels in the serum and most severely the problems related to increased local metal levels leading to adverse local soft tissue reactions and pseudotumors, which have been the most common reason for re-revision of metal metal resurfacing arthroplasties. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.